Well, good morning, good morning, guys. This is the day after the QX55 release, and I know you guys are gonna wanna know my opinion about it because we wanna know if it's gonna be a flop or not, or if a hit or miss for Infinity. So let's talk about it. Let me just jump right into it. No intro today. So number one, guys, the new FX, oh, sorry, <laughs> the new uh, QX55 is a good looking truck yes i definitely like the way that the truck looks it looks like it does have like the rear top arches of the old fx which i definitely definitely like about it and they have some of the newer styling from the q50 q uh qx uh 50 and the qx60 so they definitely modernize this truck styling on the outside to me looks amazing i definitely like how the way that the truck looks it definitely looks more modernized infinity always makes good looking cars now moving forward interior wise i think they, it is better that they do use like a black headliner for the car i do like that look of the black headliner and the two-tone seats so i think that infinity is definitely trying to once again modernize the interior and hopefully they give a good a good amount of different options for the interior package. But from what, I've, when I, from what I can see when it comes to styling on the interior, it looks good. It just looks like a newer, slightly newer QX50. But this is where I can start flipping the switch and, and talk about some of the negatives now. Now the infotainment, I think is completely terrible guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But they've had this infotainment since 2014. But to be quite honest with you, iPhone has done that before, but it seems like they only give you a few more new features. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's it. That, that is that really modernizing anything? There's no new innovation compared to other cars out there with hand gestures. I don't care for the gimmicks, but other cars out there have hand gestures and so much more tech that goes into their infotainment. I mean, come on guys, come on, man. It is. Once again, I think they dropped the ball on infotainment. The, the system is still gonna be the same system that they always usually make. I think they said their uh, sound systems sound pretty good, pretty decent. Not on the level of other more expensive um, luxury brands, but I think that they, that car systems, uh, music systems always sound really good. So moving forward from that, I think the interior, because the QX50 is not really a, a, a new, new car. I don't really like how this is gonna look out. I, I really honestly don't like how the way how the way this is gonna look. Because to me, it's like they dropped the car, but it's already dated in a way. Like the interior is already dated because they didn't do anything revolutionary. Even though this car was supposed to be technically released as a like 2020 model, 2019, 2020 model, which is about a year late. Um they still had time to make some changes and listen to us, and I think that they didn't. When you compare the interior of the QX55 to, let's say, a Nissan Kicks or a Nissan Rogue, the new ones that are out, it's totally two different interiors. I mean, yes, our interior might be nicer, might be a more uh, luxurious looking, but the amount of tech and the design that goes into the Nissan and the, 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 the Nissans, to me, is still better looking i think their cockpits are better looking so i think they once again they might have just dropped the ball with that and i really really don't like that now um talking about this and this is this video some of you guys might be watching because you're looking to get a qx55 and i gotta tell you guys straight up i am a car enthusiast so we like options you know what i'm saying you can give us something that's good looking but if it's slow as pig pick shit sorry for the guys that are watching you know you might have the kids around um i don't want to drive it i don't want to drive it it is nice that i would want to give it to my wife or partner and let them drive it but even then there's only from what i can see right now there's only one powertrain option and that powertrain option is the vc turbo four-cylinder uh turbo motor now this motor is revolutionary because you can have low power and high-end power up to 200 and something higher 200 something horsepower but what I don't like about this is they putting this, I would say, slightly underpowered motor, even though it has a, a good amount of torque, slightly underpowered motor in this heavier QX55. And the QX50, it's okay. It makes sense. 
It's a smaller crossover utility. That's what it, what's his job is supposed to be. But they chose to put his underpowered motor in a slightly bigger uh, packaging, which to me takes away from the heritage of what the FX was. You got the, 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 the 3.5 uh, VQ motor, and then you also had an optional 4.5 V8 motor, and then at some point they even made an FX50 with a five liter motor. So you had options and you had, and that's what was also helping um, Infinity make so much money because people, if they didn't like the, the, v, the, the V6, they got the V8. And I think that's what I don't like about what they did. It seems like they're only gonna give this motor option. But let's say, let's say we take the motor option out of it because I'm, I'm, I'm talking to talk with you guys. I want you guys to understand this. They don't give it a traditional transmission. Uh, the transmission that's gonna be in here is a CVT transmission. So if you guys don't know what a CVT transmission, just know that it doesn't have gears. It has a like universal long gear, pretty much two, two wheels that spin with each other. And depending on how small, let me just move in front of this guy cause he's in my way. See, look, <laughs> the freaking uh, <laughs> uh, FX55, oh, she, a uh, QX55 is not gonna have that. <laughs> but anyways, it's gonna have a CVT transmission. And let's be honest, most of the people who buy these cars don't really care. They don't really care that it comes with a CVT. They want the car to look good, they want it to be reliable, spacious enough, luxurious enough, and that is it. They'll take an L, that because 200, 300, close to 300 horsepower is plentiful, plenty enough for most modern day drivers. They don't need no fast, uh, fast demon car like that. They don't care for that stuff. But what I'm saying is, when I look at other auto manufacturers, right? They also look at the customer base. They also look at giving options to the families. Some of you guys might be a little younger, 20, 21. You don't need an F, a, F, <laughs> a QX55, right? You'll go get the Q50 because you know, you like the way the car look. It's a small, a small sedan, has a, a turbo motor, and you'll have fun with it. Now let's say two, three years, you have, you, you have your first kid. The, Q, the, Q, the Q50 may not do it for you. You might say, you know what? I want something with a bit more cargo room. Sits a little higher off the road. My wife is gonna be driving it. Something that I don't really need to be uh, really powerful like that. Then you'll start looking at the QX50 and the QX55. It'll say the QX50 is a little too small, but you like the styling and the looks of the QX55. So you'll go get the QX55. And then let's say you have two more kids after that. You have twins. Now the QX55 isn't for you, right? You're like, this is this is too small of a truck. Then you go to the QX60 or the QX80, pretty much the bigger truck, because you need the more amount of room. And this is before people who want to be brand loyal. Nissan Infinity isn't really thinking about that because if you gave me a, like before, if you gave me a twin turbo six and a Q60 and a Q50, and now I have to graduate to the Q50, QX55 or the QX or the Q70, I, I would actually want to choose the QX70, um, the QX80 over the QX55, just because if I'm the type of guy who still likes a decent amount of performance or to have something that's at least decently quick, I would want to get the V8 that they still traditional V8 because the four cylinder is just not going to do it for me. Look at BMW, guys. If, if anyone's from Infinity's watching, if you're still watching it, yeah, this is not even five minutes in, it's 10 minutes in. If you guys are still, well, yo, what are we doing here? If anybody from Infinity is still watching, whatever the case might be, right? Think about it like this. When I go to BMW, I can get a four cylinder X4, X3. If I don't want the four cylinder, I can upgrade to the six cylinder uh, X3, X4. If I don't want that car and I want the fastest car that they make, I can get an X3, X4M. And these things sell. People are buying them, Infinity. Pe period. Period. Yes, majority of the people are going to get the four-cylinder. Then, the, then the rest of the majority is going to get, guess what? The six-cylinder turbo. Because they didn't want the four cylinder, it was too underpowered. They used to have an M3, and they didn't want to get the full fledged X3, X4M. They were like, no, I like that that non six V6 B58. I like that car. 
And that still comes in a sport packaging. I like that. And then for the people who like, you know what? I want to graduate to an X3, X4, but I want the M. It's there. And you just pay an inflated price for it. And it works for BMW. And it works for Mercedes. And it works for Audi. You guys can do the same thing. So I really think that uh, uh, Infinity is really trying to follow uh, Nissan. Now they're trying to merge the, both of these brands together to make pretty much... It's, it's, it's a way to cost, be cost-cutting. Most of the platforms are usually the same. The chassis are the same between at least on Infinity. But usually, Infinity would try to differentiate itself from the Nissan. So it will give you different type of motors. So the fact that I'm gonna, you're going to now have a tw- transverse uh, variable compression turbo four-cylinder motor with a CVT and an all-wheel drive, that's basically a Rogue. Basically. You just looked in my face and gave me a Rogue. Come on, man. Now we got our basic, we basically just got a Rogue, a nice-looking Rogue. A really nice-looking Rogue. And to be honest, I actually like the interior of the new Rogue more. So, this is it. This is just what what it is, and this is the cost cutting that has to be done, and I and I really don't like it. I mean, majority of masses don't care about what the car enthusiasts really care about, but we are still the people who have families and want to purchase certain cars. When I want to get a truck, I'm not getting a QX50 because I need something that has a bit more balls. I love the way the car looks, but I would literally only give that car to my wife and let her drive it. I'll drive if I need be. I bet like, this car is nice, but this is not something I'll take my hard-earned money to. And, like, wanna, um, my hard-earned money, this guy's sleeping at the light, my hard-earned money, and go and get. No, I don't like that. But you know what? When it comes to sales, when you look at sales projections, and you can see what actually worked, Infinity made a lot of, uh, not only say made a lot of money, but... With the QX50, that was majority of their sales in like the last two to three years. So they know what they're doing. They're making a car for the masses. They're making a new car that people are going to run and go get because these families don't care about power. All I wanted Nissan Infinity to do was two things. One, I think you should. they should have gave us a slightly a better infotainment system or a completely new, t- new style of in- infotainment because it's the same one from 2014 just with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but they didn't do that. And two, I wanted them to be able to give us options. Get, if you're going to give us an FX style car, pretty much a replacement of FX, you just made it a transverse CVT motor. How was that giving you the same essence? You gave me the look, but you didn't give me the essence. I should have got a traditional nine-speed that's in the Frontier and the Nissan Titan. I should have also got an optional B, a VR30 twin turbo that's in the QX, I mean the, Q, the Q50 and the Q60. Period. It should have been there. It should have been the higher option. It should have been the base level. Should have been the VC turbo four-cylinder. This is the cheaper version, and you should have gave us a higher level premium sport version or just premium version that will come with the come with the FX a Q, QX55, which would have been a, a whoa that guy was speeding. I wasn't speeding. That would have been the QX55. Excuse me, guys. The QX55 it would have came with a, a, a red sport tune, and that would have been it. That would have been it because I understand you wouldn't want to give a 288 horsepower motor and then give us a 300 horsepower BR30 motor. That wouldn't have made sense. And I understand why Infinity didn't want to do that because on paper, it didn't make sense. All right, let's just give them the, the 300 horsepower V6 and the inline and the VC turbo. They're like, no, that doesn't make sense. We, it doesn't, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do that. But no one sat there and said, but what if we make the sport version like let's say let's give it the 400 horsepower tune vr30 no one someone sat there and brought it up and they were like nah no one's gonna really buy that no one really wants to buy that and most of look at our sales anyway we don't need to complicate the service uh, practices and processes we don't want to have one platform that has two we already have the nissan kick slash rogue with this same platform so it's just like 
we don't have to train put any more time and attention to train um our workers on it even though the, the vr30 been out forever already right ridiculous guys ridiculous but outside of that guys um sorry for my rant i'm just a little i'm a little disappointed in the lack of options and i'm a little disappointed that the fact that the traditional amount of people really don't care about transmissions and i i, I get it I, I get it but knowing that acura um acura toyota lexus and all these other brands don't really use um cvts on their crossover vehicles and even ford and a few others i don't understand why nissan infinity keeps following this cvt transmission i guess it's maybe a reliability thing but personally, I don't like it at all. So, guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe button with the bell notification. Uh, you can hit me up at Boost Motion IG, Facebook, and Boost Motion Gmail.com. I'm gonna keep saying this on videos. I'm gonna only answer your, I'm gonna start only answering your questions on my social medias on the weekend. On the weekday, I have a day job. So, and you guys ask me a lot of questions. But if you really feel like you want to hit me up in my DM. And you really can't go just do a Google search or YouTube search of any topic that's for the Q50, Q60. You can hit my cash app and I'll, and I'll get back to you directly. But outside of that, guys, you have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You have a good day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost in Motion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.